let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. Father God, we know that we are not here by accident. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I am just an empty vessel. Lord, I pray that you will use me to your glory, Father God. I thank you that as the message comes forth, that we will take this and not only be hearers of your word, but be practical with it and use this in our daily lives. I thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So most of us in here have smartphones. You know, maybe you have an iPhone or you have a Samsung. I'm team iPhone all the way. In order for that smartphone to do what it is designed to do, you, the user, must know how to use it. In fact, if you don't know how to use it, then you have an iPhone or a Samsung and you're misusing it. A majority of us, we use our phones for texting and talking. But did you know that your phones can be used as a printer to print something? Did you know that your phones can be used as a scanner? Did you know that your phones can be used as a wallet? Apple Pay, Zelle, Cash App, mobile banking, you name it. Are you using your phones to its highest potential? Or you haven't even scratched the surface to determine what your phones can do? You know, I have a friend who has the same iPhone that I have. And every time she takes pictures, her pictures are like studio quality. They're perfect. So one day I said, but we have the same phone. How come you are taking all these fancy pictures and you post on Instagram and Facebook and they look so lovely, almost like, you know, model, you know? So she showed me this feature on the iPhone where when you take pictures, it almost looks like professional pictures. So now we don't even have to go pay those people $300 to come and do maternity shoot and all those photos. You can do it on your own phone. You know, so our phones are capable of doing all of these things. But most of us, we don't even know it because these things, they're hidden. You see, the manufacturer designed it so that, um, the manufacturer designed the phone with so many abilities, so many, so many hidden features that until you dig deep, you will miss it. You will not know what your phones can do, what more your, phone can, your phones can do. And so I think that we are like the smartphones. You know, God designed us with so many talents. We have so many gifts, so many capabilities that we don't even know ourselves that we are capable of. So we need to really dig deep and seek God so that he himself can help us to discover what we are capable of. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Knowing your purpose is the key to fulfilling your life and preserving it. It is the key to your destiny. Google defines purpose as the reason for which something is done or the reason for which something exists. As women, we play several roles. We are, we are mothers, we are sisters, we are daughters, we are wives, and so on. In addition to taking care of, of our families full time, we work full time. And though we may do all of these things with great joy, I often ask myself, God, why did you create me? Why did you create me as a woman, more importantly? And why am I here? And so today is Mother's Day, and we are celebrating women all across the world. Happy Mother's Day to all of you agape women. Thank you. I titled my message, Discover Your Purpose. You see, I, I truly believe that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. And, and, and that I know that, you know... Um, uh, and, and I know that God has good plans for me, plans, for, plans to prosper me now and in my future. I know, I know that. But in order to discover my purpose as a woman, 
and just my purpose, my overall purpose in life, I had to dig deep. And so let us turn our Bibles to Genesis 2, 18 to 24. Genesis 2, 18 to 24, and I read verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Verse 19, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But Adam, there was, no, there was not found and help meet for him. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and God took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so first of all, God in his own infinite wisdom created man and he gave him everything to make his living purposeful. But then he saw that there was one thing missing. And so God said, it is not good for a man to live alone. I must make him a helper. So God took Adam's rib and formed the woman. He took a part of Adam and cloned the woman. You see, when something is cloned, though the genetic makeup of the clone is essentially the same as its original, the clone is said to function better than the original. You see, women and men, we, our genetic makeup is the same, but we do not function the same. So in this scripture, we see one of the purposes of a woman, and, and that is to be the man's helper. This doesn't necessarily mean that the woman is the one doing all of the dirty work but rather the woman maximizes the potential of a man. Amen, amen. <laughs> Eve was created to provide valuable and vital strength to Adam. In addition, Eve was created to be a corresponding and equal partner for Adam. Thus, there is no need for subordination. In fact, the Bible doesn't even hint it. I'm sure most of us in here have heard the saying, behind every great man, there is a great woman. Martin Luther King Jr., Coretta Scott King, my president, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Reverend Dr. George Ade Minta, Mrs. Julia Ade Minta, hallelujah. I'm sure most of these great men would attest to it that their wives are their biggest support system, always encouraging them in all the ways that leads to their success. Women, our role as helpers to our husbands is not just about cooking and cleaning and doing the laundry, but those things are necessary and they're helpful. 
Our role as helpers to our husbands is about helping him achieve his dreams, encouraging him to be a better person, reminding him to stay focused on the things that matters, and just overall being his biggest support system. I know that I am my husband's biggest fan. Aside from being helpers, we are also incubators. One of my favorite preachers, Miles Monroe, has preached about women being an incubator. He says, everything you give to a woman, she multiplies it. If you give a woman a house, she'll give you a home. If you give a woman groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give a woman a sperm, she'll give you a baby. If you give a woman a sentence, forget it. She'll give you a paragraph, a mouthful. <laughs> Amen. I remember in my college days, in my microbiology class, several of the labs consisted of growing bacteria in incubators. And as students, it just brought so much joy to us. Whenever we would pick up our Petri dishes from the incubator and it just had bacteria growth on it. It sounds nasty, but we felt so relieved. We felt so much joy because we felt like the purpose was served. You know, incubators, they are responsible for the development of people and things. In the neonatal intensive care unit, also called the NICU, several babies are kept in incubators, several premature babies are kept in incubators to help them fully develop. And, and recently at work, I met a, one of my patients, showed me a picture of her baby that she had just delivered at 24 weeks. You know, babies are supposed to be born at between 38 and 48 weeks. So 24 weeks is premature. And she was just telling me that, you know, the picture was making the baby look bigger. She said, you know, this baby is about the palm of my hand. And I said, wow, some of us, even after 40 weeks, our babies don't even want to come. But I spent a few minutes with her, and we just talked about God's miracles and his mercies and his overall grace. Because some of these things he does and we don't even understand. Along with prayers, the incubator will keep the baby warm and promote the growth of that baby. And just like the incubator is responsible for the development of the preterm baby, women, we have such impact on our families. Amen? Looking back at my life, and everything that I've ever been through. I know that my experiences have shaped some of my purposes. You know, I lost my mother at the age of nine, and I had to move to America at 12 to live with my dad and my stepmom. And the transition from Ghana to America, I'm sure those of us that were not born here could attest to it, that it wasn't easy. I remember in the seventh grade, I wore a skirt to school. You know, I lived in California, so it gets pretty hot out there. And one of the boys was singing a song about me because I didn't shave my legs. <laughs> so he goes, shave your legs, shave your legs. Your legs are getting hairy like your Uncle Larry. You better shave your legs. <laughs> Kids can just be so horrible. But my parents were always encouraging me to aim high and that the sky was my limit. One quotation that my dad used to encourage me was Isaiah 49, 16. It says, behold, I have inscribed you in the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. My dad made it known that... God has me in the palms of his hands. 
And that regardless of what I was going through, he will always watch over me. I want to encourage you all in here with this word. That no matter what the situation may be in our marriages, with our children, with our jobs, with our finances, God sees. He knows. And he has a purpose for you. So we should continue to be strong and trust in him. Hallelujah. We have looked at two main purposes of women in general and how they pertain to how God designed them. So now let's touch on how we can identify our individual purpose so that we can be women of purpose. Challenges, they often point us to our purpose. Sometimes we look at our lives and we wonder why we've been through the things that we have been through. Like you may ask, why did I lose my mother at such a young age? Well, if my father were in my life, why am I in my mid-30s to late-30s and I'm still single? Why did I get diagnosed with stage 4 cancer? We don't know the answers to these things. But I'm here to tell you today that every single thing that you've ever been through is a part of God's plan. God orchestrated all of these events for a great purpose. You may be feeling down about a particular event. You know, just this Wednesday, I met a lady at work, 55-year-old, diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. And, you know, one of the things I love about nursing is that you spend time with people and you get to intimately get, you get to know them intimately. And she was just sharing with me how hopeless she was and, you know, she almost wanted to die because they, don't, they didn't have any money, you know. Um, and th- she just felt sorry for the husband. They're trying to sell their house and downgrade and buy a smaller home and, she was just sharing all of these things with me, you know, and I, and I just, I, I looked at her and I, and, and I said, don't say that you want to die because your family wants you to be here, you know. And so before I left, she gave me a hug and she asked for a hug, so I, I hugged her. And, and I said, do you believe in God? And she said, yes. And she said, that's why I feel like my purpose is to educate women about breast cancer. She said, my case is different because two weeks prior to being diagnosed, I had a mammogram and they didn't see anything. I never even felt a lump. She was just telling me, oh, you know, for me, it was just like my breast was swollen, so they gave me antibiotics to keep suppressing, making it go away, but it just never went away. And so I finally demanded for them to do a mammogram again. And then, you know, the rest of the tests that go on to diagnosing cancer. And so she said, before I walked out, she said, make sure you educate people about this. That whenever they find anything wrong in their body, if a doctor is treating them and it's not going away, tell them to demand for extra tests. And so I, I it just, you know, I had already prepared my topic, but it just kind of solidified why we should know our purpose. And so sometimes, you know, things are happening to you and you don't even understand. You're like, why is it happening to me? But maybe God is letting it happen to you so that you can advise somebody. It sucks that you are the sacrificial lamb, but that's a role that God has given to you. Amen? I also believe that our purpose is innately in us. You know, oftentimes, many celebrities will tell you that they were born with a specific talent. You know, I like Beyonce. Beyonce's parents will tell you, you know, from her childhood, she loved to dance and sing, you know? And now look at her. She's one of the top entertainers in the world. So many people are born with their gifts. I look at my daughter, Robin, and 
And I know that she's going to be an influential person in life. She's going to do great and mighty things in her lifetime. She takes after me, her mom. <laughs> I remember in class four in St. Teresa's school in Ghana, I stood on stage with boldness and courage, and I recited this poem. Keep St. Teresa's clean. St. Teresa's is such a beautiful school. Even our seniors are not setting good example for us. Hey, that day, I'm sure the seniors were waiting for me after school to beat me up. <laughs> but from Robin's infancy, she's always had this strong sense of character. Like, I can do this attitude. And that's one thing I admire about her. You know, Robin can go to the playground and she'll rally up children who are sometimes even much older than her. And she'll engage them in a game. She's a natural born leader. I don't know what God has planned for her, but I know that it is tied into leadership. Amen. It is important that we know our reason for being here. Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. The word says in Colossians 1.16, I, I like the message version. It says that for everything absolutely everything above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Amen. I was having a conversation with my mother-in-law about this very topic. And one of the things that she said that struck me was that she wishes she had started living in her purpose in her youthful age. Because in your youthful days, you have more strength to do the Lord's work. Now, that is not to say that you cannot do the Lord's work at an elderly stage, but certainly there are limitations. Because even the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1, that we should remember now thy creator in thy days of thy youth. And take no delight in physical pleasures. In her elderly stage, she seizes every opportunity to witness to people. At her home in Achimota, Accra, Ghana, she has about three coconut trees where she gives out the ripe coconut to people who sell them for free in exchange to evangelize to them. That deserves a clap. <laughs> Amen. You know, some people come just for the free coconut. And others come and they are saved. Through this, she was once able, um, she witnessed to a Muslim through this. She didn't know that he was a Muslim, but she's done her part. The rest is up to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So then how can we delight ourselves in the Lord so that he can direct our path? We must be like Christ. In the quest to be like Christ, we must first examine ourselves to ensure that we're born again so that he himself will direct us. Amen? At times, what you do easily can point to your purpose. In the Bible, Jesus chose Peter, a fisherman, as a disciple. So now instead of fishing for fish, Peter was now to fish for men. You, you can see now that his purpose was not too far from what he was originally doing. Many people, women and men all together, have found great joy and have made meaning out of life by following what they love to do. And they've eventually found fulfillment. They have touched lives, felt at peace with themselves, and have made history by living in their purpose. Your purpose might be in what you love to do. Find it. 
Amen. We must be prayerful. It is okay to ask God, God, why am I here? Why did you create me? What is it that you want me to accomplish on earth? I love this song, I Know Who I Am by Sinaj. It's such a solid song that declares who you are and what your purpose is. Do you know who you are? Do you know what your purpose is? Ask the person next to you. Do you know who you are? Do you know what your purpose is? We must constantly acknowledge that God is the reason for our being here. You know, sometimes when you suddenly wake up in the middle of the night, instead of scrolling through your phones, you know, I'm guilty, Instagram, you'll just be scrolling there till you fall asleep again. Pray. Read your Bible. Bible stands for basic information before leaving earth. Read your Bible. I have an auntie that on every birthday when she calls me, she'll instruct me to read the psalm of my age. I haven't gotten to Psalms 91 yet, but I love Psalms 91. It says, he that dwells under the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say that Jehovah, he's my fortress, my God, in whom... I trust. Pray. Say, Father Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. This is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Because many people do not get the opportunity to see a new morning. Finally, make yourself available for God to use you. Doing God's work will guide you into your purpose. I know that sometimes as mothers, we, there are so many responsibilities that we have outside of the church. You know, like managing our homes and caring and raising for our children, working full time, and sometimes even going to school full time. There are all of these barriers that prevent us from fulfilling our calling and our commitment to doing the Lord's work in his kingdom. When this opportunity was presented to me, I had so many excuses that went on in my mind. I'm so busy. I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two. I just had a baby. You know, I'm in grad school. The list could just go on and on and on. But I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. And I can tell you that my life has never been the same. And so this morning, I want to challenge you. As much as you invest in your family, as much as you invest in your professional growth, you should also invest in your spiritual growth. Because after all, that's why we're here to serve God and direct people into his kingdom. God will give you the resources, the grace and the strength to do it. So if there's a particular area that you are talented in, you know, maybe yours is that you love to sing. When you open your voice to sing, people are people just literally, they get goosebumps and they are intimately drawn to worship God. Commit that gift to servicing within the church. Because as you do that, you give glory to God. And by bringing glory to God, we begin to walk in purpose. Then we make God happy. Because we are now in alignment with his will. Living the rest of your life for the glory of God will demand that you change your priorities, your schedule, your relationships, and everything else. 
It sometimes means that we must choose a different path. Making sure that we surround ourselves with like-minded people. People who will correct you when you are not living a life pleasing to Christ. Amen? Agape women. Agape women. We should be bold and proud that we are important in this life. Without our existence, things will fall apart. We are the salt of the earth. Like the Bible says, if the salt loses its taste, it is of no use. May the good Lord help us to discover our purpose in life, our purpose in the home, our purpose in the church, the society, our workplace, wherever we find ourselves so that we can continue to give glory to God. Amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day. Thank you and God bless you.